It's Monday, March the 9th, and you're listening to the Three Nerds in a Basement podcast. I'm Vince. I'm <laughs> I'm Anthony. And this is the Geek Chic Culture Show, where we talk about all the cool things in the world. Woo! Uh, welcome to the show. Anthony, how are you doing today? I'm fantastic! I'm so happy! You know what? I'm going to back that statement and say I'm fantastic as well. Blavin, how are you today? I hate you guys so much. <laughs> so good! Are you good too? Are you feeling juiced and oh. energized? Ready to go? I just want to eat a bunch of Indian food. Oh, God, I feel like jumping. <laughs> Oh. I hate you so Standing much. up and sitting down multiple times. Yeah, like a rocket ship. <laughs> Blast off. Mm. Oh, God. You know, when I was a kid, I always wanted to be a firefighter. <laughs> Just spray that hose. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Just kind of okay. let it go wherever. Okay, the joke is I'm having gastrointestinal problems currently. <laughs> oh. So this is, these guys are starting to make poop jokes <laughs> <laughs> at my expense. I hate you guys. Oh, well. <laughs> we tried to have fun. I guess we'll just be sad. Yeah. Thanks oh. for killing it. <laughs> Thanks for killing it. Such a downer. <laughs> Debbie Downer. Such a downer. You know who else is a downer? Mm. Batman. What? Batman's a downer. He always seems so happy. No. You know who's happy? The Joker. Darkness. He's like, I'm Batman. And then Batman comes in and just ruins the party. My parents are dead, but whatever. I mean... YOLO. And so, like, for my first pick of the week is Batman, Arkham Knight. Trailer, you guys see that? No. Nope. What is this? What? You guys didn't see this trailer? No. Yeah, what's this all about? Tell me all about it. So, I'm going to tell you right now. It's the uh, finale to the Arkham series. Oh, Oh, for the game? Yes. I got to get it. I've seen news on the game. I haven't seen the trailer. It is only for next-gen consoles. Oh. Oh. I'm out. Snap. Snap. Yeah, maybe when I saw it, I was like, man, I need me a next-gen console. (laughs) This is the game that's going to get me to buy one. Here we go. So the, the premise is, um, you're going to get to go around all of Gotham, and you get to drive the Batmobile. Is it like the movie Batmobile, or is it an original Batmobile? It's a cross between the Tumblr and Val Kilmer's Batmobile. Ooh. You know how Val Kilmer's had the, the blue mm-hmm. lights with it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, so it has that, but it's like as big as the Tumblr, but it's not cool. Actually, it is pretty tank-like. I don't know. <laughs> you got to look at it. It's, it's hard to describe it. But it looks cool. My only concern with the trailer is the beginning they show there's some sort of like uh, announcer saying, hey, we got to evacuate Gotham. And so like all the city's evacuating as Batman is coming in. So it honestly just looks like a really big version of Arkham Island. Mm-hmm. And that kind of disappoints me. I was kind of hoping there's going to be civilians who can like mess around within the city. But it looks like it's just Gotham's been entirely invaded. So they've taken away everybody. Oh, okay. And just left criminals. Yeah, so it's like, oh, well, gee, thanks. Arkham Country. Yeah, so and I don't know as much as I want to drive the Batmobile. I don't know. It's fun to fly around that game. So I don't know. Yeah, that's that's actually what I've been. I heard on a couple podcasts of people just being like, like flying was so cool that like relegating yourself to a car is like a downgrade. And did sense. I miss an Arkham? No. Yeah, you did. Arkham Origins. Uh, that I wasn't a Rocksteady game, though, right? It doesn't matter. It's part of the, it's part of the franchise. Is it really? Mm-hmm. It's the canonically first in the series. So I did miss one. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's a good game. Yeah. Hard is okay. By okay, it's probably as good as the first game. Uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I thought that was okay. <sighs> Arkham's Asylum? It's as good as that. So, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so no. Arkham Knight looks pretty neat. I kind of hope that you get to have, as well as the Batmobile, you get the... Uh, Batjet. That'd be cool. Batjet. Uh, the villain they're pinning as the big bad is going to be Scarecrow. He's always a good villain. You can do a lot of cool visual stuff with him. Uh, the current rumor that all the fans are looking at is Hush. Because, you know, Hush was like, hey, I'm coming back. Oh, interesting. Uh, but I'm going to just ruin it for you all. It's the Joker. Ah. How can it not be the Joker? Crusade. It's always going to be the Joker. Crusade. The Joker is not nope, dead. it's Penguin. Trust me, it's the Joker. Everybody else will show up, but it's the Joker. Mm, true say. Yeah, so I don't know why people are freaking out over this. It's the Joker. Trust me. There's just no way. It can't be. It can't not be the Joker. It's Har- the Joker. It's Harley Quinn. No, because you can play as her. That's the pre order bonus. What? Yeah, it'll probably be one of those silly, like, uh, challenge maps that you get to play as her. Most but likely. I don't think it's going to be like the Catwoman stuff, but yeah, no. Arkham Knight looks cool. Mm-hmm. I, uh,. 
Gonna go buy new console, I think, for this game. Which but, one, though? Oh, uh, I don't know. Probably an Xbox or a PlayStation. But if you get already get an Xbox for hmm? Titanfall, oh, then I'll probably buy a PlayStation eventually. <laughs> I don't know. So apparently, you put that on pre-order for that. Yeah, I did. I did. I did. When is it for the Wii U version? Uh, Tuesday. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um. I'm. But I'm holding off on opening it. I just wanted to put one down so I could get one, and then I'm gonna see how well the 360 version is. Oh, okay. If the 360 one's okay, then I'll go return it. But if it's not, then hey, now I have my bundle. Mm -hmm. So that's all. That's how I planned it out. Uh, my other pick of the week. I'm gonna go into toys a bit. So, do you guys know what what are the big toy boy franchises are? Hot Toys, Barbie, Lego. You guys are awesome. Yeah, you guys are sweet. Yeah, good job. Uh, oh, franchises. Duplo. No. You're... Okay, big trans. Like, are we talking like brands? Yeah. Brands are like companies. Brands. Or... So I was right. Hot Toys. Mm, sorry, franchises. Okay. Transformers. Sure. Uh, Power Rangers. Yeah. And My Little Pony. I don't think it's a boys line. Although, although many would argue against that. that. I was going to say. Okay, so one of the oldest ones is G.I. Joe. Oh my god. Great. America Hero? American the, Hero. The American Hero. So their 50th anniversary is this year. Mm -hmm. All right. Hasbro celebrating it in style. With a robot. What they're doing is canceling the toy line. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, early Are retirement, mother. I am entirely serious. Uh, this news just broke today. Today we're recording on Sunday, and the whole toy world is in a panic. This is like mm -hmm. one of the icons of the industry just saying, nope, <laughs> goodbye. Mm -hmm. That's insane. Uh, yeah, and the problem is, you know, they've had two failed movies, and with two failed movies means what? Two failed toy lines. The second movie was great. Mm -hmm. to, for kids? For me. Yeah, are you buying their toys? All the... No. <laughs> no, see? It failed. It failed. It's one thing that it didn't succeed at the box office. It's another that their toy line didn't take off. Yeah, true. You know? but And it's it's just it's just the way the world works. I mean, I guess back in the 50s or 60s, kids wanted action figures of army men. Mm -hmm. But hey, when you have superheroes every summer, why would you want army men when you have yeah. Iron Man? That's true. Right? Uh, they're cooler than real life. You know, at first I thought, well, hey, but isn't Call of Duty a big thing? And then I thought, wait, that's a video game. <laughs> you're not buying toys on that. No. So you're just playing Call of Duty. Yeah. You're just yeah. God. You're... No one cares about who who Ghost is. And something tells me that if you really want to get into some like merchandising, you probably just go all the way and get a real gun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, check it out. It's the replica from the game. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, <laughs> a real gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo. -hoo! So, so this is the uh, M41A that Soap used in... in Yo, it's so <laughs> sick. Oh my god. I got the ACOG scope on it, just like in my multiplayer yeah, profile. Yeah, 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 yeah. I also got the red dot, but no, no. ACOG yeah. in real life works better. I'm going to custom paint it later. Yeah. I'm going to do some panel lining. I'm going to put that uh, that uh, that gold that gold uh, skin. Yo, check it out. I also got a double-sided mag. Yeah. Well, really, it's just a mag duct tape together. But it's sick! <laughs> 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 but yeah, back on track. G.I. Joe is, is going away. Um, wow. Man. And a lot of fans were happy this year because they're like, oh man, Joe Con is coming up. Joe Con is the big no G.I. Joe way. convention. They're like, Hasbro's going to do big in style this year. And Hasbro's no. like, sorry, we've, 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 uh, we're canceling the line. We've dismantled the team behind it and we've allocated their resources to other franchises. So I like how they couldn't even just be like, uh, maybe we'll just, for the 50th, we'll just keep it, and then 51, we'll just be like, eh. Yeah, no, they're just like, we can't, they, ju they just see. There's just no interest. Wow, interesting. Yeah, so uh, the, I, I know a, a good chunk of the um, team who works on G.I. Joe at Hasbro are now over at uh, Transformers doing the movie stuff. Oh, wow. So, like, if you, if you see a Transformer from the movie line that has a lot of guns, there's your answer. <laughs> And just hums. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you know there is one. There is one Transformer called Hound in the movie, and he's basically an old grizzled vet with a beard, a robot with a beard, a robot beard, and he has like a five barrel shotgun, a, ch a mini gun, four pistols, a combat knife, and it's like, well, we know where you came from. <laughs> you came from GI Joe. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So that's uh That is uh, something else. My gosh. Yeah. But you know, one of the Hasbro toy lines that are that is still flourishing is Transformers. Hmm. 
right? And I think I think surprise, surprise. It's, I mean, yeah, of course, right? <laughs> Who doesn't like transforming robots? Not me. You know what little boys like? Robots and cars. You know what transformers are? Robots and cars. <laughs> They're both robots and cars in yes. one thing. They are the perfect toy. <laughs> That's why they make movies. You know what adults like? <laughs> Robots and <into> cars, okay? <laughs> uh, but I mean, your pick, I believe, was the something about Transformers? Yes, it is the new movie coming up, Transformers. Yes, Age of Extinction. Age of Extinction. Okay, is that actually the title? Because no, no. I see you type it all no. the time, but I see nowhere else type it. Because I don't want to write Age of Extinction, but you understand <laughs> what it is. <laughs> okay. And honestly, no one cares about the subtitle. Yeah. So this movie, uh, there's a new trailer that came out. So it shows Marky Mark, Mark Wahlberg. Mm. I'm so sold on Marky Mark. Yeah, me so, too. You almost crept this down for pots, put you through college. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> he is a dad. Yeah. And he finds Optimus is because it's the short nose cab, right? Yeah, yeah. And he fires it up. And yeah. says he's gonna melt it down. Mm-hmm. But when he opens the door, shells and stuff fall out of it. Yeah. Like big gun shells and whatnot. Yeah, and then he goes, he turns it on, he's like, I think we found a Transformer. And it's so <laughs> funny. And uh, so him and his hot daughter. Oh, of course. What? She's Nicola, super hot. Nicola Peltz? She's not young either. She's like 20-something. Oh, she's like 18. Hotness. Anyway. Damn, really? Um, Damn, really? <laughs> they get attacked by the governments and then Optimus Prime protects them. Mm. And then after that, it's just a bunch of scenes of showing off Bumblebee and other new Transformers and the people saying that they don't need Transformers anymore. But then the world gets attacked and Optimus gets shot and then the final scene is Grimlock running up to Optimus and, and Optimus handily swatting him away. Just punches him in the face! Yeah, punches That's, him right that's right why Optimus out. is the Autobot leader. I don't understand and then Grimlock just tumbles away. He's like, oh god. Oh no. <laughs> Momentum. <laughs> yeah. So this movie looks fan freaking dazzling. So here's the thing. Yeah, dog. Uh, I, I, you know, the Transformers movie series, I understand. It's not trying to aim at what I like about Transformers. And I understand that. So why is Michael Bay out of nowhere suddenly going, hey, you Transformers fan, we know how much you like that flat nose cab that is. Optimus's original fucking form. I'm gonna pander to you now, and it's like, did he not have a flat nose cap before? No, 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 never in the movies. So they just changed him. They just changed him now to make him in line with his original G1 uh, counterpart. What? And it's like, what? So it's like it's it's crazy because it's like I I'm done with the movies, right? But Michael Bay has done just enough to make me be like, okay. I'm going to be there. Don't there you worry. go. There You just answered your own question. Don't worry. I'm going to buy that ticket. I'm X3D. Don't worry. Oh, you've seen points on it. <laughs> That's insane. I, I didn't even realize that he wasn't a flat nose before. Yeah, no. If you look at all three movies, Michael Bay has not given a single fuck to the fans. <laughs> Zero. Yeah. This movie could have been called Gundam for all we know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and... That's that's how different it is from the original series. Oh please, I want Michael Bay to direct a Gundam movie. <laughs> so uh, is is Optimus supposed to be meant to be washed up now? What happened at the end of the last one? Uh, no one knows, man. Optimus rips Megatron's head out from his spine, and then he shotguns Sentinel Prime in the back of the head, and then their credits roll. <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty awesome ending. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty sweet. Don't you guys remember? Yeah, that's exactly. how it ends. <laughs> And then and then the music kicks in and he's walking heroic like and Lincoln Park comes in and it's credits. <laughs> Jesus. Oh. But yeah. no, so so the premise is like obviously no one likes Transformers. No one needs Transformers. World's against Transformers. And apparently the Autobots are against Optimus. Oh really? Yes. Yeah, so that's why Optimus is like in hiding. What is going on? So it seems super cool. And when Optimus is standing there, I don't know if you guys have seen um, the posters for Optimus. And like you can see, he literally looks like a knight. Like he has knight's armor, he has a shield, and he's like wielding Excalibur. Interesting. He sells the Allspark? Uh, the Matrix? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he still has that, yeah. Oh, he could be wielding Star Saber. Ah. Easy song. Easy. If they say it's Star Saber, I'm going to lose Back down. Just... my <laughs> shit. Back it up. Oh, oh my God. Oh. No, if over. they just say the word Star Saber. All they have to say is, I've got, I've got the Saber from the stars. If he says something like that, 
It's over. God it's damn. over. Like, he's done it. <laughs> Maybe that's why he's pandering. Oh, yeah. See? I don't know why he's pandering. He's realized that all the Marvel movies are doing good because they stick true to the source. But the thing is, it's like, they had an option to reboot and just go all the way pandering. But no, he wants to keep it in this weird real-world continuity and then, I don't know. Or else Mark Wahlberg couldn't be in it. Mark Wahlberg could have been in it. He could have been in it. Do you think he's going to like just scan a new truck and not be a flat nose truck anymore? Yeah. And I thought so. Yeah, yeah. That's his, yeah, that's why he's in hiding. He changed his truck and now no one knows who he is. Yeah, his new truck is a Mercedes. Really? Yeah. Holy shit. It's like a big Mercedes. I've seen it already. Interesting. It was the, it was the first promotional images. It's like this really fat truck. Yeah, I just saw it just now. P-H-A-T. Yeah, with flames. Yeah. So. It looks cool though. Yeah, I mean it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, Transformers, I think we're all hyped for this one. Yeah. Can't wait. Nicola Pelt, I think, is going to be the breakout star in this one. I don't know, man. Marky Mark. <laughs> oh, that guy's the best. Stand behind me and then explosions happen behind him. Ah. So close. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Anthony, what's your picks of the week? <laughs> My pick uh, is a, a prank that actually went kind of crazy. All right, fill me uh, up. Tony Hawk, Moby, and... Uh, what is his face? Uh, Doc Brown from Back to the Future, Christopher Lloyd. Whoa. All got together and they made, they, they released this YouTube video on YouTube, obviously. And uh, it was of a hoverboard. Yeah. They had the they had the board from Back to the Future and they're like, listen, we've done it. We've made a hoverboard. And it was like this three minute video or like three or four minute video explaining how they went through all this work and it's been years in the making uh -huh. and they see people using this hoverboard and, like, it's really good special effects, like, but people on, like, at least on Reddit, like, there were a, a good segment of people that were like, is this real? Can this be real? And it's just like, <laughs> what? The hopes of all these kids are just like, please, hoverboard be real, please. Wait, hold on. Isn't, what year do they go to in Back to the Future? Uh, is it 2014 or is it 2015? I forget. Okay. I don't remember the exact. Okay. Because I'm going to say that would be, that's that probably why. Yeah, spot on. Yeah. Yeah. But still, like, yeah, just the, I've, like, in the Reddit thread for this, people are just like, please, please be real. Please. And then, obviously, it turned out to be a huge prank. Uh, they actually, actually so much so that they released an apology video. Oh. Being like, I, we are sorry for, like, crushing your childhood dreams of having a hoverboard. Yeah. But it's not real. Oh, and this wow. is how we did it, and they show like the making of and stuff, and it was just it was just funny to watch the internet explode into childlike wonder for at least a couple days. I do like how the three celebrities they used were totally irrelevant people. Now. Yeah, I know, except for <laughs> the guy from Back to the Future. Yeah, except for Christopher Lloyd. Like, so yeah, it was uh, Moby. Yeah, Moby. Was <laughs> Where there. Where's he been? Yeah, it was Moby and Tony Hawk. They were the main uh, celebrities, and then yeah. Christopher Lloyd. And it turns out that uh, the website Funny or Die was behind it. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and then my other one is just a, a video, like, uh, you turned me on to Initial D Vince, mm. and then I learned about all the Initial D, or I've seen, always seen the Initial D video games mm -hmm. uh, around, but I didn't know you could do, like, all the crazy stuff in Initial D, like the gutter turns or whatever, yeah, and stuff like that. It's... And so on Kotaku, I just saw this, this uh, it was kind of like a fluff thing, mm -hmm. uh, it was just of a video of this guy playing Initial D Stage 6 in this, like, he is the god <laughs> of initial D. Yeah. He is going down this mountain full speed. Like, I think he hit two walls and by hit, I mean, he like tapped it mm -hmm. and it's insane. Like just watch it. There's really nothing more for me to say on that one. Yeah. But it's super crazy how someone can just get so good at this game. It's cool. Yeah. It's super transferable to other. Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's crazy about it? His foot never leaves the gas pedal. Yeah, it's just <laughs> it's just always down. <laughs> That's initial D. Crazy. Toss steering wheel input. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> but uh, him, I don't know how he's taking those corners. Like there's some like S curves, and I'm just like, how did you not just hit a wall? Like, mm. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, check it out. All right, cool. Anything else you guys would like to mention? Bring up, bring to our attentiveness. No. Something? Anything? Nicola Peltz is 19. Thank you, Vince. So when she filmed this, she was like 17 then. She was ni She's 19 now currently, so when I have a crush on her, it was true she was 19. No, because you're looking at footage from when she was filmed, back when she was 17. 
Don't put words in my mouth. <laughs> I will justify this any way I want. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Hey, man. Oh, that's what I want to talk about. Uh, one more thing. Last year on April Fools, Capcom and Bandai did this thing where they took a poll. Yeah. Uh, which Mega Man character they want to make next in their mm -hmm. SH Vigorts lineup. They showed three. They showed Roll, Mega Man Zero Zero, uh, who the Iris from, I think, Legends. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, Iris? Like, the girl in the pink? Yeah. That's from Mega Man 4. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're right. You're right. The other one from Mega Man 4... <laughs> X4, uh, X4. X4. Yeah. The other one from X4 was uh, Mega Man X Ultimate Armor. Um, fans all voted for Mega Man Zero Zero. Capcom made... Iris. X Armor. Ultimate Armor. Sorry. Can you imagine if you're Iris? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, and everyone's like, oh, yay, another Mega Man. Oh, great, cool. Well, Capcom listened and said, okay, this year we're making Zero Zero. So I just wanted to bring that up. Mega Man Zero Zero, huh? Yeah, my favorite Zero. The best Zero. Interesting. The only good Mega Man character, right? He's actually Mega Man, right? No, he's no, zero. zero. He's Zero with a new body. Oh my god, real? Hot new body. Uh, yeah, I think it's like after X, after the X generation, he gets destroyed, mm -hmm. and they find him, like, he has half his face missing, I think, and he's missing a body, and the Cyber Elves come in and build him a new one. The what? The Cyber Elves. You just made that up. I did not. I did, he, he's not, I can't confirm. He's, but his body is so cool that he doesn't have a built-in blaster anymore, he just has hands. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> And he has holstered pistols! Oh, it's so good. But he's the best um, Z-sword. He does, it's, I like his. It's the, the triangle and it's flat. Yeah, it's the coolest. So yeah, I can't wait for that. It's supposed to come out sometime in the second half of this year. So I'm excited. Interesting. Yep. Okay, so I think that's it. Shall we move into our weeks? Yep. Hello, listeners. Did you know you can email us at 3 Nerds in a Basement? Well, you can. Just send us an email at tniab.letters at gmail.com and we will read your message on the air. I'm going to kick off this week because I'm going to go quick. So, I watched all of Veronica Mars season one. How many seasons are there? Three. Okay. I finished season one. I don't think I'm going to finish the next two seasons by the time the movie comes out. That's okay. So at first, when I watched this, I thought that this was just, okay, teenage girl solving problems because she's a detective. Turns out, it's a really good, cool show because she's actually morally fucked in the head. What? What? Yeah, like... I need to watch this. Like, she's super selfish, and she will help the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Cool. But she does it not knowing it. Like, like she's oblivious to her actions? Yeah, she's oblivious to that she is not helping the cause and that she, the only person she's helping is herself. But she thinks she's helping everyone. Okay. What? Huh. Yeah. So. And then the show hits some really, really interesting uh, topics. I'm going to hmm. download this now. I was just like, huh, well, this is really cool. Yep, downloading this. Thing. I like that. I like that. Like, uh... Mm-hmm. Is it a show that I really have to pay attention to? Uh, not really. You can leave it okay. on the background. But let's oh. just say we they get to incest eventually. Ah. Uh, you know? Hmm. They get to... To rape and stuff. Yeah, they get they, they go there. All the good stuff. They get... All that family Only the topics you want to know in high school, <laughs> they get to all of them. Interesting. <laughs> like incest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They get there. Because the Lord knows. I was always wondering. Yeah. Like, oh, I, I did I tell you guys the premise of the show, like how it starts out? Isn't she working for her dad's detective company or something? That's like 10 minutes in. She wakes up and she's been raped. Oh. And the, and the whole point is she's trying to find out who raped her. That's crazy. What the heck? Yeah. This is crazy. And it's like this little fun, fun and games type show. But like the underlying messages, we're really serious and dark, but we're going to hide it under Kristen Bell's charm and her, her goofiness. Wow. Could the show's tone also that be... That doesn't sound very nice. Like a metaphor for her maybe, tone. Maybe. Because, like, she's all bubbly, but really she's dealing with these underlying issues. Exactly. Could be. Wow. The show's so deep. Yeah. It's great. I like it. Uh, and then I beat The um, Last of Us Left Behind. It was a lot shorter than I thought. 
Okay. It's like two hours. What? Maybe, maybe less than that. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was going to be as long as one of the chapters in the game. It's not nowhere near as long. <laughs> How much of that is gameplay and not cutscenes? What do you... Well, it's all gameplay. It just depends how much of the gameplay you want to engage in. Oh, okay. So you have, like, choices and stuff? No, you have opportunities to just explore. Oh, okay. Like, you can choose to explore and check everything out, or you could just run through the stage. All right. I checked everything out. And it was still two hours? Yes. Oh, my God. So if you run through it, it's going to be, like, 45 minutes. Wow. But they do. I'm not going to spoil any of the story stuff. I just will say where they go narratively in the flashbacks are, is really interesting. But in the current day, what they do the one thing I, I wanted them to see, see them do in the Last of Us is you fight the bad dudes. Okay. At the same time as the zombies. Oh, okay. So that makes sense. So like, if you're doing stealth, you could just throw like bottles at the bad guy's head, and then the zombies will just go in and eat them. Oh, cool. Yeah. Right? And so you can play around like that. It's it's way more fun with that. And I wish the main game had more of that. I'm kind of sad it doesn't, but... Did you feel like the levels were set up for like, oh, in this hallway, I should throw a bottle here because it's just the most optimal thing to do? Uh, it's not... Yeah, but it's not obvious. Okay. Like, because it's It all takes place in like a mall, actually. Oh, okay. So... You're in stores, you're in the, like, two, two, two levels and stuff, so, yeah. There's that. Hmm. Yeah, but no, I don't know, you know, now that I realize it's $15, I don't know if I would, I would probably wait till it's 10 Just because it, and it really depends on how much you like The Last of Us, how much more you need of it. Because mm -hmm. at 15 bucks, you might be a little bit like, ah, I don't know. Yeah, like, I, like, that's the thing, I, like, I like The Last of Us, yeah. but I don't know if I need more of it. Yeah, like, it's, it's cool. Like, you get to know a lot more about Ellie. Like, you understand why she is the way she is. Okay. So. And, like, yeah, if you if you thought your favorite part of the game was Ellie with the bow and arrow, then, yeah, that's what this is all about. <laughs> Ellie with the bow and arrow. Yeah. Sh yeah. Shooting deer. Uh-huh. Okay, and the last thing I did is I spent the most of the way we can building a model kit. Built the real grade Destiny Gundam. Um, And I, uh, I tried doing... I tried really taking my time with this and going all the way out. Uh, I think this is the first kit I've built in like 10 years. Wow, that's a long time. What about that other real kit you just built? I know, I mean like the first kit I built and finished. Oh, wait, you didn't finish the other ones we bought? The other one I bought? Yeah, the other real grade? Nope. The Zeta Gundam? Nope. What one's not finished on that one? Because uh, the problem with the real grade Zeta Gundam is it's a transforming model kit. Okay. And because it's a model kit, it's got weaker tolerances than a toy. It kind of just falls to pieces, uh -huh. and it's just super fra frail and fidgety, and I'm like, fuck it. So, because I tried to transform it before I finished the build, just to see how it would work out, I'm like, okay, no. <laughs> I'm out. I'm not working with this. So, I, like, the Destiny... I don't like Gundam Seed Destiny. Sure? I like the Destiny Gundam, though. Because <laughs> he's got wings, he's got the anti-ship sword, he's got the anti-ship cannon, he's got the beam rifle, he's got the boomerangs... And uh, it's got a shield. Yeah. So I think it, it, it's really cool. Um, I tried a lot of different techniques here with, um, with like, things like panel lining and paint. Uh, I used two different types of panel lining markers. I used the one that had the, the felt tip, the fine tip. Okay. Too thick for the lines. <laughs> what? It's too thick. Like, if you look on the kit here... There's some areas where the lining's really thin. Mm -hmm. The marker is probably three times the width. Wow. Those fine tip markers. So I used a mix of black ink and water. And uh, it's like a, an oil-based ink. And then I just brushed over it to fill in the little cracks. And then I had to use rubbing alcohol to remove the excess paint Whoa. when it dried. Work city. I panel lines right on the runner before I assembled. So, I just spent like one day just like taking all the things out before cutting the, the sprues out, and then I just panel lined on the thing because it was easier. Mm -hmm. uh, I did a lot of I added a lot of cool things like <clears throat> I added a lot of little silver detailing that I figured that eventually you didn't actually end up seeing when it was done. So like on his rear end, he has like a booster on his back that you never see that I painted in silver. So I was like, ah. The judges will notice. Yeah, and I'm just like, huh. 
I like that it's there, but no one's ever going to see that, you know. Um, I don't know. It's it's really cool. Like I really enjoyed building it. I do like how it has an inner frame like a master grade, mm -hmm. but I like how it's small like a high grade. Uh, I'm still waiting for those high grades to come in, and I'm going to go and get a master grade, and once I build all three, I'm going to decide which of the three sizings I like best and which one I'm going to proceed in with fourth. Perfect grade. No, there's not enough options for characters. What are you talking about? Strike Freedom. Done. No. <laughs> no. 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 So, but yeah, that's what I'm going to think I'm going to do. But, uh, yeah. It got me to think, though, uh, about anime, like, that we're watching the season, and I'm watching Kill la Kill and Gun to Build Fighters. I'm like, I wonder which one I like better. And I'm like, you know what? I like Kill la Kill better, but I think I'm going to give the edge to Build Fighters, because it has inspired me to go out and build Gundams. It's done its job? Yeah, but and you know, and, and I mean, like, Every time I watch a show, I'm always like, oh, I want to buy toys of that. But Build Fighters is a show made to sell toys, and it worked. Sure, welcome to Vanguard. <laughs> yeah, I know, but like usually I, I don't like those type of shows. Yeah. And like now that I'm at this age, like I don't I can't stand those shows anymore. But there's something about Build Fighters that just like it's like it it like after the show ends, it's like talking to me like Vince, you need one, go build one. You love robots. Enjoy. Enjoy in the gunpla magic. <laughs> You can customize your own stuff. Yeah, I can't wait. I, uh, oh, I can't wait. I just can't wait till we get, like, you buy a kit, and we're just like, yeah, I just made it, like, my own custom color scheme. And yeah, you, so... You just, like, you just, like, totally disregard canon. So the next thing I'm going to do is I think I'm going to try and invest in an airbrush and just and, and uh, try and paint next time. Uh, the only thing I'm curious about is how do you panel line over paint? Because I'm afraid that, like I just said, I use rubbing alcohol to take off the excess. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid that's just going to take off the paint, too. Mm -hmm. So I always wondered how uh, people get the... how they panel line on over paint, so... I don't know. I've, I've got to look into a lot of different things. Uh, also, stickering was a nightmare. Um, like, when you look at the kit, it doesn't look like there's that many stickers. Yeah, it does. Okay, there looks like there's that many stickers. Yeah. There's, there's twice as many as you think there are. Yeah, probably. Because uh, the one thing I've... Like, when you look at it from the front, you're like, Oh, yeah, 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 there's stickers. And I always forgot... Wait a minute! I gotta do the same thing on the back. Yep. And then it's like, oh wait a minute! I gotta put stickers where you can't even see. Mm -hmm. Dang! Damn it! Uh, great thing about the kit: twenty-five bucks. That is value for money. <laughs> yeah. Could you use like a a dip pen? Uh, I had a dip pen. Like I have a dip pen, pen too. Uh, I use that. It's the same thing as the. Uh, as what I did, the oil-based paint and water. Mm -hmm. The thing is, I wanted my. Uh, my solution to be a lot more diluted so I could remove it easier. Okay. Because the problem with the dip pen is that you need a lot more alcohol to, to remove it. But like even then like like you could you wouldn't be able enough like to do it fine enough where it only does the line, it doesn't like splash anywhere, or is that just super hard? Yeah, you can't do that. Oh, no. okay. Like I, I know I've seen some people do it with a paintbrush, but they just got like the steadiest hand. Oh okay. and I'm like, nope, uh nope. Their their outside job is that they're a surgeon, and they're like, oh, okay. That or they, like, I don't know, panel line cars. <laughs> For a living. They, they they do the flames on real cars in real life. <laughs> so Yeah, no, it's fun. I can't wait. Uh, the next thing I'm going to build is the Master Grade uh, Build Strike from Build Fighters, so I'm pretty excited to do that. Cool. Yeah. So, well, uh, guys, if I start bringing, like, Gundam kits, like, a billion kits, I'm just letting you know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think anybody here is going to stop you. No, I, I just mean like, hey, if I if I just disappear, <laughs> <I'm in. laughs> is is Vince home? Oh, yeah, he's in his room, and you're like, I, I open the door, like just a bunch of boxes yeah. fall over. Yeah. I turn on the light, you're like, ah, yeah. I'm looking at so many sales. I'm just like, oh man, I want to see how much I could buy for sales. So I'm going. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's my uh, that's my week. Still can't get over the Veronica Mars thing. What? Jeez, that sucks. What? That's how they start the show. I mean, you didn't see. It seems so bubbly, right? But she got just... late. Okay, well, yeah, okay. Like, the opening scene is she wakes up, she's wearing this white dress. Yeah. And she's like, What am I doing in this bed? And you're like, What is she doing in this bed? <laughs> and she has this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. And she has this confused look on her face, and she looks at the floor, and you're like, What's she looking at? Is that just like a shirt? No, it's her underwear. And she just picks it up, and she's just like, She realizes what's happened. Oh my god. And then she leaves. She goes to her car, and on her car is spray-painted slut. 
Oh my god. Yeah. That's how it opens wow, up. Wow, that whole that like whole scene is like she's wearing a white dress. That yeah, matter. it's like yo, literally your purity at first, was just ruined. Like at first, maybe because I wasn't really paying attention when I was watching the first couple episodes, but I'm like I thought nothing of it. But it's then as sim- yeah. as the show went on, I'm like, wait a minute, what's going on? Like what is what are they talking about? And I'm like, this is this is dark. There's a lot of symbolism in that first scene. Jeez, mm-hmm. holy smokes, it's great though. Trust me, it's great. <laughs> it's good, awesome. Yeah, it's great. I loved it. Wow. Uh huh. Well, I like I said before, good for her for trying to do some, do something about it. She's trying yeah. to figure it out. She did try to figure it out. While I was building this model kit, I understand you two went to a concert. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we did. It was so good. So we went to a concert with a Japanese <laughs> pop star named <laughs> Kiari Pamu Pamu. Blame him. And she is kind of like I guess a Lady Gaga, Katy Perry combined type person of Japan. Okay. She used to be a fashion blogger. Uh, people know her from the song Pon 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 that went viral. Pon de Ripley. Yeah, Pon de Ripley. <laughs> yeah, no, she's really. not Rihanna. Oh. But, uh, yeah, so we went to her concert and the first thing that struck me was that in line, <clears throat> at least half the line were Lolitas. Lolitas? Yeah, yeah like, like dressed... straight. Hold, hold on. Are you, are, are you guys meaning to tell me that in line was just Young promiscuous women. Uh, wrong. Oh, wi- oh, women. Oh, you got it. So <laughs> that was something that I didn't realize. The average age of like a Lolita girl now, or like a Lolita least, person, who's yeah, at least here, at least well, in the culture, apparently is like twenty two or something. Oh well, yeah, it's young woman. Yeah, crazy. I thought that there was all just little girls and stuff. Look, Lolita is like you know like right, but it's well, Lolita fashion. Okay, okay. Yeah, now I understand it's a fashion. Okay. Yeah. And uh, there's also a whole lot of Japanese actual, like, native speakers, like, Japanese people in line. Oh, a lot of Nihon. Yeah. A lot of Nihonjins. Yeah. And uh, it was pretty fun. Like, the concert was insane. I lost my crap. I went crazy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I uh, mean, Blaze was just, woo! He was off. He was through the roof. He's like, oh, my God. She's speaking Japanese. <laughs> Oh. And then she read like a letter that she wrote. She's in English. Like, in English. Oh. Saying, she said in Japanese that her English wasn't so good. And then she proceeded to say something along the lines of, This is uh, my first time in Canada. <laughs> went crazy. Wow. <laughs> Everyone lost it. Yeah. She's like, I went to Niagara Falls yesterday and it was amazing. We're like, oh my God. <laughs> so, um... so the other thing too that I found really amazing what her concert is that her backup dancers are sweet like her banter dancers go hard and you can they're you can just like tell. i don't know how they just don't lose like 15 pounds every concert. they probably do they're probably super thin like there's probably just the costumes that make them look larger but man okay. they, they're really okay her songs are super catchy i ended up buying both of her <clears throat> albums oh my god yeah he went in he went in deep I didn't want to do I would have bought a shirt and everything. Yo, man, waifu. Oh, die. please, right? She was my waifu. Jeez. Oh, when we are, I am Winar. Oh, my God. What but, have you done? Yeah, it was sweet, man. Who are awesome. you? <laughs> yeah, so. You're not cool. So, it was... Okay, all right. So here, here is my thought process, all right, guys? Listen. No, you I, cannot justify it. I was speak- You know I'm always against the weebs train. Uh-huh. Yo, you weaved out so hard, yeah, though. Yeah, but uh, you know what? I'm like, I'm waiting for this concert. I'm here at this concert. If I just go against the weebs, I won't. It won't be fun. I'm just gonna immerse myself fully in the weebs uh-huh. and enjoy myself. Okay. Good time. No, it's fun. It's fun to immerse. But did you? At some point, you were just like, I need it, and clearly that manifested in you buying two of her albums. Yeah, and I've been listening to it nonstop for the past two days. Whoa. <laughs> Much to the chagrin of my friends, but. Wow. Yeah, hey, man, I like that. Just, uh, Disappointed. Disappointed. Yeah, man. Kevin Sorbo would be <laughs> disappointed. No way, man. <laughs> I, yeah, I also really enjoyed the concert. Well, that, yes, was that, was, that was a given. Yeah, it was. It was really Are you more cool. surprised that I enjoyed the concert. Yeah, I'm surprised you because you weren't supposed. To, like the only reason you went because your brother. Yes. Like you weren't interested. Then you got interested. Yeah. Then I got interested. Man, okay, so <laughs> it's like so, the, so. What happened? Hold on, hold on. This is what I'm thinking. It's like. You know people pre-drink for a party? <laughs> okay. Okay, thanks. Were you like pre-emerging? Like, get my see, boop on? See, that's the thing, right? Knee home. So, so when, when we were driving up, I wasn't that excited. And then we saw the people in line, and then I lost my shit for some reason. Okay. In the car. Okay. Yeah, it was crazy, because like, it was, 
it wasn't it was like such a diverse group like it was it was old people young people okay uh, lolitas nerds like there were, I, I swear there was a couple jocks there was one guy with a harley davidson leather jacket and okay. i'm like what and it was just crazy it was like people of all types just yeah coming to see kawaii cuteness okay yeah so it was pretty good Something. it was really really good so i wanted to tell you guys some songs that you should listen to. Oh, that's what you're doing here. Okay. Yeah. So the one, my favorite one, is Invader Invader. Invader. With uh, the dubstep. Yeah, with the dubstep lasers. Um, the second one that I like is Cherry Bon Bon. <laughs> cherry candy. Yeah, <laughs> Cherry Bon Bon. That's one of the uh, song names. And the chorus, she just repeats the words cherry bonbon about seven times. Okay. Yeah. All right. Furioso, Furioso Tensho <laughs> is the other one that I like. All right. And then, uh, obviously, there's like Pon Pon Pon, but I don't really like Pon Pon that that, that, that much. Oh, no, because that's the popular one. Yeah, I guess I've heard it a lot. Uh, and the last one, the one, her new one, is Yume no Haj Hajima Ring Ring. That one's good. Okay. That one is a good one. Yeah. All right, then. Yeah. So. So yeah, <laughs> she's pretty good. <laughs> just FYI. Well, just FYIs. I'm proud of you. Why are you proud of me? We've been out. Yeah, man. Yeah. Listen, I'm. I totally. I thought happy. we lost you again. Yeah, we thought like you were lost the win. Like even though I'm not into this as you guys, are, I understand the like. I have my own personal <laughs> vices that I know I'm ashamed of as well. So it's kill okay. <laughs> No, no, that no one's ashamed to kill a kill. <laughs> trust me. I thought I should be ashamed, but no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was a good concert. It was really good. I really recommend if you have a chance to go see her, you should. It's quite the experience. How? how sorry. Uh, how much were tickets again, guys? Forty-five. 45? And I didn't realize 45. that if you played extra, you uh, could have a meet and greet. Oh, I would have had. A yeah. Meet and so, greet. like on on the Ticketmaster website, yeah, it just said VIP, and it didn't explain what those tickets meant maybe that's isn't that understood to be like backstage pass I, I, I didn't know but another thing that I didn't like was that the venue that we were at so the people who were VIP were sitting in the balcony and there's glass around the balcony so like a sporting event like they were in like yeah so it's like they were like watching all the plebs like just below oh, that's but weird. It, yeah, it's weird because it's kind of disconnecting you from the concert like we were just in the thick of it maybe they chose that though yeah but man being in the thick of it was insane it's pretty cool. sticks and stuff. He almost lost his cell phone. I, I almost lost my cell phone. That is a fact. Because he was jumping so hard. I was jumping so hard. so hard that it fell out of my pocket. How many concerts have you been to before? Two. Uh, like, two before this one or two including this two one? Two including this one. Who was the other one? Oh, no. Three. Three. But one of them was like a festival, so I went to a bunch of different oh, ones. Oh, okay. So, uh, Bare Naked Ladies. All right. So, Jason Mraz and a bunch of other people. And, right. and uh, yeah, and... In Australia, all right, and this one in Japan. Oh, okay, there we go. Uh, or this one in Toronto. Cool. Yeah. Also, Sound Academy is in the middle of nowhere. We were we were driving there, and like it it goes away from the city, and then it just turns into like factory industrial area. Uh -huh. And I'm like, where is this place? We're just gonna park in. We're just gonna my GPS is gonna lead me to nowhere, and then I'm gonna get murdered. And then it just turns into like, oh, there's like a hidden concert near the water. Yeah. Like a well, was it inside? It was indoors, right? It was indoors, yeah. yeah. It was outdoors. Well, that's Ooh. good. That's good. I was going to say, yeah, because I don't really like the outdoor ones sometimes. In the summer, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. No bueno in the winter. Yeah. Or the rain. She's super cute. Yeah. Right yeah. there. Like, like, I expected her, like, just, like, on the video, I'm like, oh, you're, you're, pretty, you're like, adorable. And then just... In in person, I'm like, oh, okay, well, how far were you guys? I'm losing it. Oh, we were like, ha like we were like halfway from the front row or from the front of this stage. Yeah, that's pretty good. Question. We were like, we were in the middle of the whole crowd. I don't know how yeah. big this crowd is. If you had to guesstimate, three hundred people. Yeah, like I'd say like four hundred people. No, no, I mean like your distance from you to the stage. Oh, I would say it's around fifteen feet. Yeah, fifteen feet. So three meters. Sorry, no, no that's really close. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Not three meters, sorry. Wait, no, that's too close. I'm doing my math wrong. Sorry about no, that. No, that's too close. Like 30 feet. 30 feet? 30 feet. Yeah. Oh, okay. So she wasn't a speck, but we could see her, like, full body, like, you know. 
Uh, also, it helps that we're tall. And yeah. apparently, like, for some reason, everyone who went to the concert was short. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we blocked off quite a bit of people. Oh, well, that's good. So I ended up turning sideways so that, you know, other people could enjoy the concert. Why, man? Why? Because, man. These, Why? It's a concert. These short Japanese you push your, behind you. You push your way to the front. Oh, God, I wish. Oh, man, the concert was sick. Yeah, it was really fun. All right, well, we better uh, change gears before you have an orgasm. Ah! I already had. All right. Anything else you were doing? Uh, I did a magic workshop. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're doing seminars because you're such a pro. <laughs> yeah, okay. I think me and Teach the guy, me and Rob, who did the seminar, I think we were both went two and two at the actual time. Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know what they say. What? Those who can't do. Oh, my God. There we go. <laughs> so, yeah. Sensei. So, we uh, we did a draft workshop for Magic the Gathering, and it went really well. We covered all the key cards in the, the different colors, and how to draft oh, shoot, each archetype. Mm -hmm. There were 11 archetypes, like color pairs and stuff. So it was really, really fun. It was a good time. And uh, hopefully we'll have more seminars so that more people can come out and learn how to play magic. Magic. Well, learn how to draft and stuff. But, uh, yeah. All right. Well, next week I'm going to Montreal, so I better be on my A-games. All right, all right, all right. Are you teaching a seminar out there, too? <laughs> yeah, okay, he's... Teaching French? No way, man. Are you teaching them in French? Yeah. Whoa! Uh, this card is... Very good. <laughs> I don't know what accent that was. Just make sure to use your Quebec accent, not your France yeah. one. Oh, oh, you picked a that card, no? That might be France. Yeah, that, that I think that is France. I have no idea. Okay, Remy? Yeah, Remy? Yeah. LeBlanc. Alright. Well, that's good. Yeah, man. Carry Pommy Pom, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> so good. I had so much fun at that concert. Yeah. I'm glad you guys had a wonderful time. I wish you were there, Vince. No, it's okay. We, we, pour, we, pour a, we pour a drink for you. I wish I got a meet and greet pass. Yeah. Next time. Now so you I know. can make... Some guy, they posted the pictures of the people who did the meet and greet. And some guy did the DBZ Fusion pose with her. Wow. <laughs> and she did it? Yeah, she did it. It was sick. Oh, It was man, such a cool picture. That's awesome. The DBZ Fusion. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I, I kind of want, like, if I ever meet, like, the Backstreet Boys some way, okay. I want, like, them... And the Ginyu Force pose. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Or better yet, the Spice Girls. Oh my god. The Spice Girls? And I couldn't see that. Yeah. Could you imagine? No. No, I can't. I actually can't. I just said it. Handy trick. For a cool photo for your Facebook profile, find a reflective surface and do the, f do the, the fusion pose onto the surface and it looks the mirror image of you. Yeah. You're like you're doing it with yourself. Take a picture of that. It's pretty cool. Oh. You know what I mean? Okay. Because yeah. the reflection is you. Yeah. And you're doing the exact same photo. Uh, yeah. It's awesome. Okay. Get it. I, I understand. I've got a mirror right there. I'll try it out. Sure. 100%, man. Oh, yeah. You can. Yeah. All right. Cool. Anthony, your week? My week was the same as last week. Oh, no! I've been playing more Lightning Returns. That's hot! It's... I don't think it's, like, utter trash now. Like, but it's just very middling. Mm. Uh, Six still a game worth it. No. Oh no. It's fine. We all like, make mistakes. You do like you go like some of the main story stuff is pretty cool in what you do and like the world and all that. But again, like they've made they've made battles just like tr like they don't matter. They like, don't matter. Yeah, you get you get gill, which you mostly get from quests, anyways. Okay. And, like, since you don't get experience or anything, then... Like, the only reason you do a battle is to complete a quest. Because yeah. it's, like, collect five of these, go beat five of these. And so, it's just it's just really boring to battle, which, mm -hmm. which kind of sucks. Um, you know what they say about boring people? No. I don't. And then, uh, more Diablo 3. Those, uh... Those loot drops that are tied to the character who gets the loot drop mm -hmm. is both a blessing and a curse. Because, like, sometimes I'll be like, sick, got a legendary sword on my wizard. I ID it, it's like 500 intelligence. But it's like, this is trash on a wizard because it's a sword. And if I was a barbarian, this would be amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if, if intelligence was strength. Oh, man. Yeah, so it's like both a blessing and a curse. But, That's too bad. But I've been getting, like, <laughs> mad loot. That's actually useful. So it's been... It's been a good time. Yeah, it's been helping. It's it's actually been fun. Like, I want to... I wanna you getting get pumped it. for the expansion? Yeah, actually. Because uh, they also have, like, in the expansion, they're going to have, like, an adventure mode. Oh. Where you can go and, like, fight, like, uber bosses and 
uh, like it's like you take out these bounties and get a, get rewards and stuff. And plus the new class looks pretty cool. <clears throat> oh, there's a new class. Yep, the Crusader. He's like a he's like a take on the Paladin pretty much. Okay. Uh, he's a holy warrior. Oh, the Crusader. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. One of his moves, he just sends down. It's it's like a judgment beam from mm -hmm. the sky, and it just obliterates people. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, I'm actually I'm actually really excited for the expansion. Yeah. No, I. Uh... I'm very tempted by the PlayStation version. It's good. It is now. It, it's now something I would recommend. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I was going through my Steam library. Yeah. And I started playing Spec Ops: The Line. I heard that's a good game. So far, like the story is really interesting, but the gameplay is kind of whatever. Uh, I I feel that they, they make up for bad enemy AI with just an abundance of enemies. Kind of like like a million monkeys writing will eventually write Shakespeare or whatever. Kind of like that. Like if I send out enough dudes to you, eventually someone will do something smart. Well, yeah. Okay. Uh, like it's just waves upon waves. It's, I swear, like each section is a <clears throat> horde mode map. But other than that, like you, you get into like some really like morally questionable stuff, mm -hmm. and it's kind of like getting into some like weird heart of darkness stuff with a uh, like you meeting people that are supposed to be on your side and then it's like it's like a really dark story it's pretty cool mm -hmm. uh yeah it's yeah right now i'm just kind of like sludging through the shooting to get to the next story beats but it's it's decent all right so yeah playing that on the pc you're gonna beat it yeah i heard it's not that long and i need a break in between lightning returns so but dark souls is like in a day yeah i know i have to beat I have to beat one of those games before Dark Souls. I was going to say, like, are you going to just draw both of these for Dark Souls? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see when the time comes. Because if you do, you know what that means. Completely wasted. Uh, I, guess, I guess we'll see next week. I'll report back. Yeah, having my PS3 die has been a blessing. You're saving been, money? Yeah, saving money. Is... Oh, know. and the week after that is 10 and 10 2. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. And then the end of the month is Diablo expansion. Mm, oh no, Anthony's in a, in a little bit of a trifle. Wah. <laughs> He's got too many games to play. Hashtag first roll problems. Oh no. uh, it's too bad you can't sell your games for other games. Nope. Can't do it. Microsoft wanted to do it. <clears throat> and then that whole kerfuffle about fans didn't want digital only. So, there goes that. Yeah. At least with my hobby, I can... Uh, Trade away the stuff I don't want. Well, like I could stuff. trade in my stuff to EB. Oh, but see, you're always getting less value. <laughs> Yo, just, there's like no value. Yeah, so it's like oh, 50, ten. I'll give you five bucks. It's like oh my god, for for lightning returns. Oh, that's so good. Like, can I yeah. trade in copies of Magic Eight Ball Pool for PS3 <laughs> and get a brand new game? Like yeah, that's what it's like sometimes in Magic. In <laughs> just trade in this junk rare that's not usable in anything but EDH. Yeah, and then you're like, woo! It's like, you can take all my jumpers. I'll take that $50 card. Yeah. It's not self-sustaining. There's no economy, man. There it's is, not self-sustaining. There's no economy in video games. Being way into video games is like buying a car. It'll always take from you. Yeah. Well, that's not true. I'm going to give back. No. No, well, his analogy. Oh, okay. Because there was a segment of the car market that you just keep getting money. What? What segment is this? The high end segment. Oh, okay. Well, I need to be a millionaire first. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go through the struggle. I'm just saying there is no high end segment to video games. There is, but it's not as it's not as high end to where. No, I mean like it's it not gonna to keep. Be. It's it's a digital. Like you cannot. It... Like if I want to start buying up copies of stadium events. Yeah, but you see the thing is with stadium events that is not like. It's different. It's not like I can experience... You can still experience that game. Yeah. Right? It, the whole reason to own it is just to say you own it. It's not like buying a Ferrari. And then driving that Ferrari. Yeah, it's like... I cannot experience a Ferrari without having to, first to own it. True. Right? So it's a little different in that respect. Ugh. Yeah, man. Yeah, so... Uh, My first world problems are so stressful. You got too many games to play. I got too much entertainment. I, I got, can't handle it I got all. too many models to build. And Blaven's got to be... He's got too much magic to hand, like to play. Oh, God, are we getting back into Vanguard? He's got too many cards He's, he's to got shuffle. too much cardboard to shuffle. <laughs> yeah, he's got too much cards too to much, shuffle. Too many cards to shuffle. 
can't handle it. Club as can't you, handle it right now. Yeah, as you can see, we are very concerned about the state Man, of the world. Man, like, uh, it's such a depressing state here at Three Nerds in a Basement. I know, right? Like, why can't people just understand my my struggle? The plight is real. <laughs> yeah, the plight is like, real. We're not joking. This is serious. We gotta from, fix this. Kids suffer every day from paper cuts, from shuffling too much cardboard. Yeah. With a quick donation, you could save one of these kids. You know how many times I cut my finger this this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> because I was, you know, when you get the nub off the thing, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then you clean it up. Yeah. I like to cut with the knife facing inwards to my thumb. Yeah, like it's easy but super unsafe. Yeah. You guys. You should get a. You should invest in a thimble. Well, eventually, I just it, my thumb just calloused up. <laughs> Hardcore. Eh? <laughs> Your thumb's just like nope. Yeah. Having none of this. Uh huh. All right, that's it for this episode. Yo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know where to find us because you've already heard the ad. So. Oh, what? Here we go. Editing magic. See you later. Yeah. Bye.